Praise God. Praise God. If everybody would stand, we're going to open in prayer and welcome the presence of, of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for your goodness. We thank you, Lord, that you love us so much. When we're unlovable, Lord, you still love us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for that. We welcome your holy presence, Lord. We open our hearts, Lord, to you, Lord. We open our minds, Lord, and we surrender to you, our will, Lord. We die to ourselves, to you, Lord, that you would have your way in our lives. We thank you and we praise you and just and just flow through the music, flow through the, the word, Lord, that's going to be brought forth. We thank you and we praise you. We ask this in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen. Good morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You are a good God. Hallelujah. 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 We worship you, Lord. We give you praise. Hallelujah. We bring glory and honor to your name. Your name is higher than any other. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. Um, I just want to do a little exercise with you real quickly here. Um, out of Revelation chapter 1, uh, I want you to engage your mind and use your uh, mental capacity to create a picture in your mind uh, of what I'm going to read here. Uh, Revelation, I just, I did this, it was part of some of my devotions last week, and I went through it, and uh, I, I kind of did this, and uh, it's just wonderful if you can create a mental picture of the real Jesus Christ and who he is. So let's just look, just, you know, follow the words, and then as I'm reading it, create a mental picture in your mind. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants, things which must shortly take place. And he sent and signified it by his angel to his servant John, who bore witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ to all things that he saw. Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written in it. For the time is near. John, to the seven churches which are at Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come. Picture Jesus as the one who was, who is, and who is to come. Um, who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings and made us kings and priests to his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold. Behold. So that when that's in there, it's like, pay attention. This is, he is coming with clouds, and every eye will see him, even they who pierced him. All the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Even so, amen coming with clouds. Jesus is going to come back real soon. And, uh, you know, I, I just want you to get a mental picture of Jesus coming through the clouds, because that's going to happen. That's going to happen. Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He says, I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, who was, who is, and who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. I, John, both your brother and companion in tribulation and kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ was on the island that's called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard behind me a loud voice as of a trumpet. Now picture that. You're, in, you're getting a vision and you hear this loud voice behind you as of a trumpet. And he said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. What you see, write in a book and send it to the seven churches which are at Asia, to Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. Then I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. So 
here's John turning to see this voice that was behind him that was speaking to him. And having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And in the midst of the seven lampstands, one like the Son of Man, clothed in a garment down to the feet and girded about the chest with a golden band. His head and hair were white like wool and uh, as white as snow and his eyes like a flame of fire. Can you get that mental picture in your mind right now? <laughs> uh, his feet were like fine brass as if refined in a furnace and his voice as the sound of many waters. He had in his right hand seven stars and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. And his countenance was like the sun shining in its strength. <laughs> the presence of Jesus shining forth in great power. And out of his mouth is a sharp two-edged sword. And that is the word of God. And uh, uh, he said, when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. You know, uh, that might, might have been one of the first times when someone was slain in the spirit. <laughs> But, you know, you, he, did, he fell on his feet as dead, and laid it, and, and, but he laid his right hand on me, saying to me, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of Hades and of death. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to stop there. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we give you thanks. As we go to prayer this morning, we, we just have this mental picture in our mind of of you. You are the great and mighty God. You are the all-powerful one. You are bigger than all the problems that we have. You are bigger, Lord, than anything that we face. You are bigger, Lord, and you are the one that is in control. You are the first and the last. So we just come to you and we present ourselves to you this morning and we believe you and we give you thanks for miracles. We give you thanks for healing. We give you thanks for your mighty anointing on the rest of the service today. Anoint pastor as he shares. And we just give you praise. And we give you thanks with that mental picture of you, the great and mighty one in our hearts and minds. In Jesus' name, amen. I see everyone has found a place to park yourselves religiously every Sunday. <laughs> so I know when you're missing. So uh, just so you know, just so you know. Uh, just want to share that uh, we have some things going down. Uh, this Wednesday we have our Bible study. And uh, we're watching the video this time, and next week we'll do the uh, Bible study. And uh, this Saturday, the women are going to get together, and it's the first one since Will is passing, so it may be difficult. But um, we've asked um, Candy, Courtney to come and uh, kind of see us through the first meeting, and uh, we're going to grow from there, okay? So uh, be there, be supportive. We have some things going on. You have some plans for this uh, fall and uh, winter time. So uh, be there and enjoy your fellowship. Um, next Sunday, we have a special guest with us and uh, Jason and Serena Kohler. And uh, they are going to be ministering and will not I'm pretty sure we're not going to stream the service because he's in a, they're ministering in a very secure country. Uh, so they uh, you probably will not uh, stream that service. So you that are watching, you'll see a repeat of something else. So, um, but we're looking forward to having them with us. Uh, Jason's family, as you could see, has grown. He's got a wife. She's Italian. Pray for Jason. <laughs> and they have a little one. I don't know if I ever told you my my dad my dad claimed that he had some Indian in him. And so it was passed on from generation to generation. And please, this is my dad, so don't get offended, okay? Um, <laughs> 
and he called my kids because they're half whatever I am in in half Italian he called them wapahoes <laughs> and uh, I know that wap is not a very nice name but uh, that, that's what he called her and uh, Francine laughed but I heard about it when I got home <laughs> so pray for Jason but no, his family's grown, and it's really great to uh, support him on a monthly basis, and I'm so glad that he could be with us as well. So looking forward to that. Also, going along with missions, we have our BGMC, and uh, we really have a little bit of fun with that, and we have this little contest going between the guys and the gals, and uh, so far... This is where we're at. We've given almost $1,600 to BGMC. So praise the Lord for that. And uh, I got to look at this one. Last, oh, giving, that should be August, not May. Okay. Uh, the girls last month gave 114, the guys 75. The Spanish church is, again is getting involved in BGMC. Almost $42, so three, $232 came in, pretty much. And guys, we're falling behind. Almost 40 bucks. So that's where we stand. It's great to see, again, the Spanish ministry being a part of it and giving towards it. So that's where we stand. And uh, that should be to August as well, not May. So I need a proofreader. So uh, <laughs> Wilda was my proofreader. So I'm going by myself. So uh, we we have fun. We have uh, down here two buckets. One represents the girls, and one represents the guys. And uh, we're going to invite you to give to missions today. But first, we have a video we want to show you. And it's what BGMC is doing beyond uh, what we normally do with critical needs. So you can see uh, our finances go towards uh, natural disasters too. We uh, coordinate, BGMC coordinates with Convoy of Hope that goes around the world where natural disasters have happened and uh, give supplies. Uh, we benefited one year from Convoy of Hope. Uh, Mary and Vicki went over to Brighton, Michigan, and they had a couple trailers there full of goods and uh, they were bring, able to bring some stuff back for our ministry in the pantry and so uh, we're reaching people in their darkest need and that's what it's all about giving hope where there is no hope 
And as I watched this, um, I thought of our own nation. And we, we don't have maybe the poverty that some countries have, but we have poverty in hope. There's very little hope in this world. And um, I'd like us to right now just pray for our nation. Father, we bring our nation to you. Father, we, we don't know what the future holds, but you're, you're already there. You're already there. You raise up kingdoms and you bring down kingdoms according to your will and according to your purpose. And Father, we pray for our nation. We pray for the people within our nation. That God, I pray that as we sang, uh, you bring light into darkness. Father, I pray that your light through us will shine into darkness. And Father, open eyes. And Father, I pray that you'll be with our leaders. We pray, Father, that you will give them godly counsel in open ears that they receive godly counsel. Jesus, we pray. And Lord, we pray for those that are going to be that messenger. Your word say, says to pray for workers of the harvest. And Father, we pray that you will use their words, the workers of the harvest, that speak to our leaders. And God, I pray that, Lord, the authority that's there, not the arrogance, not the pridefulness or anything like that. The authority of your word speaks truth to those who are making decisions. God, we don't pray for our comfort. We pray that you be lifted up, that you be lifted up, that you be recognized. God, again, we do not pray for our comfort. Shame on us if we do. God, we want your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. God, may you have your way. God, we know you're already there. So we're going to put our faith and trust in you. And God, we pray for the churches that are meeting across our city right now. We pray that your Holy Spirit will fill sanctuaries. We pray that, Lord, those that are even maybe preaching against your words, claiming they're preaching your word, I pray that your Holy Spirit will rule and reign there. God, your word says that you will bring down strongholds. In Jesus' name, we pray that these strongholds will come down. And God, may you be glorified. And Father, we pray this in your name. Amen. 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 Well, we're looking forward to next week. Uh, looking forward to being with Jason and having him with us. Um, we need, oh, we need to take up the offering, don't we? The Holy Spirit messes with me, man. Let's all stand since you're so comfortable and we're going to play some music. That way people can get out easier, okay? Because, guys, we need a lot of money. All right, let's go.
don't mean to bug you. God love you. I don't mean to bug you. All right. But God knows you may be seated. Guys, it looks like we're in trouble. <laughs> okay. Just saying. We're in trouble. Praise the Lord. Uh, we're, we're talking about change. change. Well, we're talking about change. Um, we're talking about change. And we all know that change isn't easy, is it? I remember when we left the Niles Church, we were looking for another church. And some of you have shared the same testimony, you that have come in, in recently. You, you go to churches and it's like, this isn't home. It, it, it's, really, it's really, really difficult to find another family to be a part of. It's very difficult. We went to several churches. We finally decided that we needed to go to a church that was going to benefit not us, but our teenagers that we had in the home at the time. And so we picked another Assembly of God church, Northside Assembly in South Bend, Indiana. We, we attended there for uh, several years. And uh, it, it's tough making that transition sometimes. And it's tough making those new beginnings. You know, you, you have to start fresh. You have to learn other people. You have to learn how people do things. You get, have to get used to the pastor and moan at his jokes and, you know, that kind of thing. And, you know, I, I told a joke in, in Sunday school, and I got more moans than I did laughter. But I told him, I said, I'm just as good with the moans as the laughter. It's, it all equals out to me. So, uh, but... You know, we, we go through these transitions, and sometimes these transitions are forced on us. wonder why that is. You know why? Because we get stuck. We get stuck, and the only way he can change things is to disrupt our lives. In fact, perfect example is the early church. Jesus, when he gave his command before he ascended into heaven, he said, you will be my witnesses where? In Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and into the uttermost parts of the world. The church had been established, but they were, com they were comfortable in Jerusalem. No one was going out beyond Jerusalem. So what did God say? You're comfortable. There has to be a new beginning here. And so he sent this fellow named Saul to persecute the church. And then this, this, this man full of the Holy Spirit, and he waited on table, Stephen, was taken out outside the city, and he was stoned to death. And the word of God says that those who were stoning Stephen laid their cloaks at the feet of Saul. And they stoned Stephen to death. And before he died, he looked up into heaven, he saw Jesus sitting at the right hand of the Father. And that infuriated those who were stoning him even more. But his testimony spoke to Saul, who later became Paul. But there was something else that happened. Because of the persecution, the church scattered. What happens when the church scatters? The word goes with them. The word goes with them. That's what it's about. We need new beginnings. We need to get out of the same old, same old. And it takes purpose to do it. Because if we don't purpose to do it, there's going to be stuff that come into our life that will cause us to do it. And God will use those situations. And it's for our good. As we go through it, we think, why, God? Why is this happening? What's going on? Why, why are you closing this door? Why is this shutting down? Why, why, is it, why aren't I happy here anymore? Because he wants us to move forward. He wants us to move forward, not stay where we're at. So we're going to look at Isaiah chapter 43. 
Isaiah chapter 43, and we're going to read verses 16 through 21. And uh, when you find it, please stand. And while you're standing, I want to uh, thank Andrea for the fall decorations that are here and how they're set up. You can't see it because of the table fully, but we'll get that out of the way next week. Please stand. And uh, we're going to read God's Word, but uh, thank you, Andrea, and uh, we, we appreciate that. And also, you know, we, we appreciate, I think, Nancy is probably watching us online. Uh, thank you, Nancy, for all the flowers you put out and everything, too. She, she's in charge. she gave me orders to get more mums. That's why there are so many mums out there. <laughs> she told me, get them. I said, yes, ma'am. So, um, praise the Lord for those that have that ministry, okay? All right, verse number 16. It says, this is what the Lord, uh, Lord says. He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and reinforcing reinforcements together, and they lay there never to be, never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. The mighty animals honor me, the jackals and the owls, because I provide water in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland to give drink to my people, my chosen, the people I formed for myself, that they may proclaim my praise. Father, you have something new for us today. Not next week, not next year, today. And Father, I pray that God, we will receive it in the name of Jesus. Again, you are true to your covenant. You are true to your promises. Make those real to us today, we pray in your name. Amen. Don't sit down. Uh, let's see. I think, it, I think it's the last song we sang, Abby. The last song we sang. Our God. Our God is faithful. Amen. Our God is faithful. We need to walk in that authority. Yes. We got to quit being wimps. We've got to we've got to know that God stands with us. Yes. He's with us in that job. He's with you. Yes. Make a stand for Him in that apartment building, that home, wherever you're at. Make a stand. He's with you. He, he wants to take down strongholds, you. strongholds in your family. Yes. He is mighty. He is mighty. You may be seated. God's faithfulness and new beginnings. New beginnings are a vital part of our spiritual, spiritual journey. While they often come with both excitement and fear, God's faithfulness assures us that he will, he's always at work creating new paths and opportunities for growth. He invites us to perceive these things, these new things, and to step forward in faith. Fear stops us in our walk. Fear stops us in our ministries. I've shared with you, uh, my heart breaks for our young men that do not have fathers. They don't have a strong father figure. Not an example. 
This week, 14-year-old boy killed two classmates, 14 years old, and two teachers. The next day, there was an argument in a bathroom. A 15-year-old shot another 15-year-old to death. I don't want to dwell on the negative, but there's a reality. And it's even in our community. And I'd like us to pray as a church that he gives me wisdom, gives the church wisdom and direction how to meet and change young lives. Impact them and their families for eternity. It's a new beginning. It's something that we need to be a part of. And there's going to be things probably different as we do it. But my heart breaks for these young men. I, I, sometimes I look and I, 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 I cast judgment on them. I'm being honest here. You know, why, why don't you man up? But then I have to realize most of, have not had a father figure to encourage them, to teach them, to give an example of what it is to be a man. I grew up in a home where my dad did not serve the Lord. But I had godly men in the church that showed me how to live a godly life. And that's why I encourage our, the men that are leaders within our church to be a part of the service, to show that we have godly men that are ministering among us that could set an example to others of what it is, what it is to be a, a godly man. It's new beginnings. It's one of them. As we read in Isaiah chapter 43, the 18 and 19 says this, forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. We all have testimonies. We all have miracles that God has done in our lives. But I want to ask, are your testimonies new and fresh, or are they 20 years old? It says, I have something new to show you. Don't, don't dwell on the past. I mean, I think we, could, we should learn lessons from the past. God's faithfulness is the main one. God's faithfulness through so many times and so many, so many struggles and that kind of thing where God has come through time and time again and he's been so faithful even when we have been unfaithful. We need to remember those and learn lessons from them, but we cannot live in the past what Jesus did last year, last week, or whatever. We want something new every day. We want something new every day. We need something new every day because then it gets old. He says, forget the former things and don't dwell on the past. And that's not only the mistakes we've made, but also the good things. Because just before that, he talks about when, when the children of Israel crossed the Red Sea and how the chariots were destroyed after they got onto the other side. We talked about that in Sunday school. Did you know Sunday school happens at 925 every Sunday morning? <laughs> if you don't, you know now. No excuses. We invite you to be a part of it. But we talked about that this morning, and that's what, that's what Isaiah is referring to. Is that when, when that happened, that, that's a mighty act of God. But he says, don't, don't draw your strength from that, because I have something new for you. 
he says, see, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up, but you do not perceive it. God wants you not only to know what's happening, he wants you to see it. And sometimes we don't see it in our own lives. We, we, we think God's not doing anything in our life, but if you really sit down and talk with somebody else, for the most part, I, I, see, I see many of you growing, growing in your faith. And if I sat down with you, you may say, well, I don't think I really am. But I see, I see growth happening. Because I'm from the outside looking in. You're from the inside looking in. <laughs> God's doing a new thing, but we have to pray. God opened my eyes that I could see it. Even in ministry, God's calling all of us to ministry. He's not calling us to fill a chair. We used to say pew. He's not calling us to just fill a chair. He's calling us to invite people to come to church. He's... He's called us to declare what Jesus has done in our lives. His faithfulness, his awesome power. That he's there in our time of need. He says, you do not perceive it. I am making a way in the wilderness in streams in the wasteland. Sometimes we feel like we're in the middle of nowhere. Jesus said, I am providing everything that you need, but you don't perceive it. I have, I have brought people around you to encourage you. And sometimes you run from it, and you should run to it. Again, you can't do this thing called the Christian walk by yourself. That's why God, that's why God in his wisdom has created the church. We're called brothers and sisters. You know you're old when somebody calls you brother so-and-so. Okay? Did, Mary, didn't you call Wilda Sister Miller all the time? Sister Miller, you know? Sister Miller. And uh, I remember one time... Uh, Wilda's husband, Vern, was in the hospital, and Mary always called Vern, Pastor Vern, I think. And one time he was in the hospital, and she told somebody, Pastor's in the hospital. <laughs> and they thought it was me. <laughs> but the respect that's there. But we're brothers and sisters, aren't we? Brothers and sisters look out for each other. You know what? I could slap my brother all I wanted to, but nobody else better do it. I'll be there to protect them. And I'm not inviting us to slap on each other, okay? <laughs> okay, don't take that literally. But you know how it is. You're going to protect your family. Don't talk trash about my family. You know, I'm going to stick up for them. And that's the way we should be. Again, if you hear something negative about somebody in the church, I dare you to do this. Take that person who's talking to you and say, let's go ask them about it. Let's go ask them if this is really what's going on. And I tell you, you'll shut that person down like that. Let's not talk trash. Let's lift each they're up. And I, I'm not addressing anything. I don't know of anything, any trash talking going on. I'm not going there, so don't read that into it. But I know human nature, okay? I know human nature. And you know what? There's times where the Lord gives us a new beginning, but something has to happen for that new beginning to take place. And we're going to look at a couple of these occasions. We're going to go through uh, two in the Old Testament and one in the New Testament. 
But in, my, my hero, Joshua is my hero. And um, Joshua is my hero because he was faithful when he wasn't in leadership. He, he, he was there. He learned from Moses. He, he gleaned from Moses. He watched him. He imitated him. And God honored that. There, there's, a, there's a passage where Moses uh, went to the tent of meetings every morning, and when, as he went, uh, all the people would stand at their, the opening of their tent and then watch Moses go to the tent of meetings. And then they would pray at the, foot the, at the front of their tents as Moses was in the tent of meetings praying and talking to God. It says one time Moses left the tent, and Joshua stayed behind and continued to pray because of Moses' example to him. Again, godly example impacts others. They watch us. So Joshua was my hero. And in Joshua chapter 1, there's, there's a new beginning that's happening. The children of Israel have wandered in the desert for 40 years. For 40 years they wandered around, and it should have taken them three months to get there. But for 40 years, because of their unbelief. And then we come to Joshua chapter 1. In the generation that uh, rejected the, the report of Joshua and Caleb, and believed the other 10 spies, and went their way and said, we can't go because the, the giants are too big and we'll just fail. They didn't trust God. That generation had died. And a new generation is entering the promised land. And it begins in chapter 1 of Joshua, verse 1. It says, After the death of Moses, a servant of God, the Lord said to jo Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' aid. He said something very profound. He says, Moses, my servant, is dead. What's he saying? What's he saying? What I've been doing in the past... It's over. There, there's, there's the Pentateuch, the, the laws, you've got those, you've got all that. And later on he says, don't move to the right or to the left of what you've been taught. Stay true to my word and you will be blessed. You, you will be successful wherever you go. He says, don't, don't forget all that. But I'm, I'm starting something new. Moses is dead. You know what? There are times... Some of our dreams have to die. Some of the things that we will have to die. Our will has to die so his will can come to life in our life. And sometimes it does, many times it does take death to take that, to make that happen. It's, God, you know, it says, Moses, my servant is dead. Joshua would probably said, I know. But he was saying more than that. He was saying more than that. He says, now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I'm about to give them to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot as I promised Moses. Again, God's promises are eternal. His, his covenant with us is eternal. His promise is eternal. He never reneges on his promise. Our God is stronger. Nothing can stand against our God. Sam, where are you? Come on, are we Methodists? <laughs> Our God is stronger. Amen. He's stronger than anything you're going to face this week. Amen. He's bigger than anything you're going to face this week. Stop wimping out. Trust him. I will give you every place you set your foot. 
Your territory will extend from the desert of, to Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, and all the Hittite country to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Don't whip out. Be strong. Be courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn, to, turn uh, from it to the right or to the left that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you will be careful to do everything written in it. Then, then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Amen. He's no respecter of person. The promise he has for Joshua here is the same promise for you and for me. Wherever we go we will be successful. Now we need to define success. Success is not having my luxury Audi. Success is not having a half a million dollar home. I've shared with you on many occasions when I went into ministry, I said, Lord, I don't care if I make a lot of money. And he came through. <laughs> I don't care if I make a lot of money, Lord. I just want my kids to serve you. That's all I want. I don't want anything else. Everything else is going to be a blessing. Over and above. Give me my family. Amen. I tell you, he's been faithful. And I'm not giving up. We dedicated each of our kids within two weeks of their birth. We gave each of them back to the Lord. Amen. They are the Lord's. He's had his hand on them. Tiffany has been faithful through it all. Brent is another story. <laughs> We're believing. We're believing. God is faithful. Amen. Wherever I go, I will be successful. My house will serve the Lord. It's a new beginning. Joshua is starting something brand new. Do you know what? When you need, when you have, when you're starting something brand new, you need some encouragement. That's why the Lord repeats time and time again, not only to Joshua but to others. That when you start a new beginning, there's 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 fear there, there's the unknown there, there's all of that. But He says, "Be strong, be courageous, for I am with you." When I came here, I was scared to death. I had not preached really for years. And you suffered through it. And we've come a long way. Amen. But because it's because of God. We may look around and say, but uh, you know, we're we're we could look at numbers. But I have stories of people that come back to me and say, you made an impact on, not me personally, we as a church, made an impact on them. 
and change their lives. We are not seeing it today, but we will see it one day. Amen. We have touched many lives in this community with the outreaches we've done. We, we are ministering outside these four walls. This past week, we went to the nursing home. We had a great time. It breaks your heart to see some of these people that are thrown away. And you see their life, their, their physical body just wearing away. And you just want to go over and you just want to hold them. You know? That's what ministry is. It's not being comfortable. It's giving. Giving when you're afraid. Giving when it doesn't seem like it's the wisest thing to do. Joshua, he was going to lead a million people across the Jordan into a land that he hadn't been to for 40 years. But he had God's promise, and he saw God's faithfulness in the past, but he did not stay in the past. He did not say, hey, I'm comfortable here. You've done a lot of great things, Lord. I'm comfortable here. God said, I have more for you. And I have chosen you to lead the people in this because your report was true and you have been faithful and I will use you. We can't forget Caleb either. He was true to the end too. And at 80 plus years old, the land had been taken. And Caleb saw this hill over here and he said, that's my hill. And he went and he fought for it, and he knew God was going to give it to him. There are some hills that you have, and you need to say, God promised that to me, and I'm going to take it. I'm going to, I'm going to have, have victory there, and that's going to be mine. And it's not, again, it's not for comfort, it's for God's glory. God gave them this land. God gave them that hill. Joshua said what? As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We need to have that. We, have, we need to have that determination. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Maybe some of us need to have a new beginning right there. I remember Wilda when she shares her testimony about her dad being invited to this Bible study and he rejected it for a long time, but the guy was just persistent and he finally went and the Lord just got a hold of his life and changed his life. And he was a drinker, he was a smoker, he was a cusser, he was a chewer probably, I don't know. He was from Southern Indiana, so chances are he was. <laughs> He came home and he dumped the liquor down the drain, threw the cigarettes out. It was a new beginning. And the family was in awe, like, what is going on? And it changed generations. Changed generations. If you were here for the funeral, you saw five generations impacted by one man who was persistent in giving his testimony. Don't give up. Don't give up. Allow the Holy Spirit to use your words. Allow him to take those and make them real in the person that you're talking to. Make them real to them. And you will be successful wherever you go. And the other things, again, are just blessings. Just blessings.
Then we have the account of Naomi in the book of Ruth. You talk about having a tough life. This, this lady did, Ben. In Ruth chapter 1, it says, In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. So a man from Bethlehem in Judea, together with his wife and two sons, went to live a while in the country of Moab. The man's name was Elimelech. His wife's name was Naomi. The names of the two sons were Malam, Malan, and Kilon, Kilion. They, they were Euphrates from Bethlehem, Judea, and they went to Moab to live there. When the husband died, Naomi was left with her two sons. They married Mo Moabite women named Oprah, and the other was Ruth. After they lived there about 10 years, both sons also died. And Naomi was left without her sons and her husband. She was all alone. Helpless. When, when Naomi heard in Moab that the Lord had come to the aid of the people by aid of his people by providing them with food, she and her daughter was prepared to return home from there. When the two daughter in laws left, she they left the place they were living, and on the road they would take them back to Judah. And in the process of that, both Oprah and Ruth uh, continued on the journey. But Ruth, uh, uh, Naomi said, "Go back home, because I don't know what to promise you when we get there. Go back home to your people." And Oprah went back, but Ruth stayed with Naomi. And then we jump down to verse nineteen. It says, "So the two women." Ruth and Naomi went on to, uh, and they came to Bethlehem. When they arrived at Bethlehem, the whole town was stirred because of them. <coughs> and the one, women ex exclaimed, can this be Naomi? And she said, don't call me Naomi. Call me Mara, because the Lord Almighty has made my life very bitter. Have you ever been there? Have you ever been there? And I went, I went away full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. Why call me Naomi? The Lord has afflicted me. The Lord Almighty has brought misfortune upon me. And then we have this verse. So Naomi returned from Moab, accompanied with Ruth the Moabite, her daughter-in-law, arriving in Bethlehem as the barley harvest was beginning. There was a new beginning for Naomi and for Ruth. There are times where God directs us in another way so we can see and receive a blessing. And the rest of the story is that Naomi, Ruth went and went to work in the fields to what was left over from the harvesters to bring back home for meal and to make some money. And this guy, Boaz, saw that she was pretty good looking and started to pay attention to her and told the workers, when you're harvesting and you see Ruth following you, just leave a little bit more for her. Just leave a little bit more for her. And God blessed. And what's, what's the significance of this relationship is Boaz and Ruth are in the line and lineage of Jesus. Boaz gave birth to Jesse, and Jesse gave birth to David. And so it's very important, this four-chapter book is very important. But it happened out of tragedy, and a new beginning happened. We need new beginnings. Real quick, the third one is the church. The church. Jesus had been teaching his disciples th for three and a half years teaching them, and finally he says, the, the end is here. He says, the Son of Man is going to go to Jerusalem, 
And he's going to die. He's going to die. But on the third day, he will rise again. And the disciples couldn't figure this out. You're the Messiah. You are the chosen one. You're not going to die. You're going to set up your kingdom here on earth. You're going to do that. And they were all confused. They didn't know what was going on. But as Jesus went through the last week of his life, they saw what was coming. And Jesus died. And he passed the torch to his disciples. And they had a new beginning. In Acts chapter 1, verse 80, he, said, he says, Tarry in Jerusalem and wait until you receive the promise of the Father. And they waited 10 days. They spent 10 days in prayer. 10 days in prayer. In, in probably three minutes, you're going to hear your phone alarms come off, go off because it's going to be noon. And that's our signal to pray for miracles in the church. Not, on, not only in the church, but through your life. I, I'm anxious to hear stories where you prayed for somebody and, and God just healed them right there. In a workplace, maybe visiting someone in the hospital or in their home, and you prayed and God did a miracle. It's not limited to this hour and a half, these prayers that we're praying. But God sent that gift. The 120 were in the upper room. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. It says they were in one accord, in one place, seeking God, seeking for the gift. And all of a sudden, a sound of a mighty rushing wind was heard. And flames came in. And it, uh, one flame, and then it parted. And it, it sat on each, each head. 120 people had a little flame on their head. What would you do if that happened here? Some of you would run out. Most of us would run out. You know? And through that, the church was birthed. Through, the, through a loss, the Messiah's gone, our teacher, our rabbi's gone. Now something has to happen. And as we shared in, in Sunday school, this fisherman, this, this uneducated fisherman full of the Holy Spirit, stands up and preaches a sermon that would not today be, be, be deemed as something you would preach to have people come back. He was saying, you guys killed Jesus. You guys put Jesus to death. And you need to receive him as your Lord and Savior. You need to accept him. And you need to be baptized in his name. Boy, that wouldn't have a crowd come back today. <laughs> we got to coddle people to get them to come back. Next week, we're going to have a car to give away. And 3,000 people came to know Christ. It was a new beginning. A new beginning. What new beginning does God have for you? What does he have for you? Oftentimes, death takes place for new beginnings to take place. Sometimes it is a physical death, but sometimes, you know what? It's a death, again, to our dreams sometimes. Death to hanging on to the past, his blessings, and not looking forward to what he has for us today. We need to put those things to, to death. We need to let them die. Sometimes in the church, we keep up ministries because we've always done it that way. And I'm trying to constantly check myself. Are we doing this just because it's part of our religion? Or is it really something that's ministering to people? Is it really touching people? And we have to do that within our own lives. We need to recognize new beginnings. We need to ask the Lord, open my eyes that I can see these opportunities. We need to overcome fear with faith. We need to walk. We need to step out in faith. See, we're supposed to pray right now. Father, we pray right now that miracles will take place. 
We're going to agree together. I'm serious here. We're going to agree together right now. Lord, allow the miracles to take place today. Today. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day where you want to do your work. Not tomorrow. You want to do it tomorrow, but God, today. Today you want to do it. I pray that miracles will take place. Not only within these four walls, but God, in our marketplace, in our workplace, wherever we're at, God, pray that you will use us and miracles will take place. In Jesus' name we pray. In his name we pray. We need to overcome that, that fear with faith that God is with me and nothing can stand against me. Nothing could stand against me. Thank you, Dan. Nothing. And focus on God's faithfulness. God has been faithful in the past. He's going to be faithful today. He never changes. We change. He never changes. Those answers to prayer we had years ago, those are there so we can bring them back to our remembrance and say, God, you've been faithful. You're here today, too. I remember back, you know, I remember going through that situation years ago, and boy, I, I was wondering what in the world was going on, but you were there all the time. I, I, I have that same trust today that you're here today as I go through this struggle, and you're with us. What new beginnings do you feel God is leading you toward right now? What is, what is he challenging you to do? I believe over the past several weeks or months, God's been challenging some of us to step out. We've been, still been holding back. He's been challenging us to step out. What fears are holding you back from embracing what new opportunities God is opening up for you? What are you holding back on? And how can you cultivate greater trust in God's faithfulness as you step into a new season, a new ministry, maybe. If you're breathing, God's not done with you. He's not done with you. Amen. He still has a call in your life. What are you going to do? And some of these have to do with Struggles we're going with going through right now, too. Some maybe you're going through financial struggles, some health struggles. I know many are going through health struggles, some emotional problems, not problems, struggles. Okay, the enemy just seems like he's just beating you, man. Nothing can stand against him, nothing can stand against him, and we need to understand. That as we are faithful, wherever we step, we will be successful. Hallelujah. Successful. But you know, if you follow the, the book of Joshua, they fought battles. It was not easy street. They had to go and fight battles. But they knew in the battle, God was with them. They only got beat one time, only once, when they tried to overtake the city of Ai. And Joshua's biggest issue there was he did not go to God first before they planned on going to Ai. He went on the past victory to think he could do it again instead of trusting God for the new battle. Likewise, we need to trust him Amen. for this battle we're going to face next and know that he is faithful. Yeah. Know that he is faithful. Let's all stand. God, there are battles going on today in, in lives. Jesus, there are families. There are families that have pain disappointment. God, your, your word is, 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 is full of situations where it looks so helpless, so, 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 so negative. And God, somehow you turned it around. You brought glory to yourself and glory in the situation. 
God, you could do that in our families too. Yes. As we start a new beginning, and trust you. Do away with those preconceived ideas or preconceived teachings we've had and say, this is what God's word says and it, it does not agree with what I think I know. And I need to change my belief, my, my knowledge. I need to allow what I think to line up with God's word. It makes stands in my family. Hallelujah. Father, those who are, are struggling with health issues and, Lord, emotional issues and, Father, some, some mental things. Father, these are all real. They're real, God. We know that. But, God, I pray that you will do a miracle today. Yes. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You will lift the depression. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. God, you will bring healing to past hurts. God, that you bring a new beginning in our lives. Breathe life into us, I pray. That you can be glorified. God, we want to glorify you. That's why, that's why we're here. We're on this planet to glorify you. Great. You are. To share with others Hallelujah. the God we serve. My God. God, we pray. God, we pray. Hallelujah. Jesus. We forget the things of the past. We don't dwell there. We look forward to the new beginnings you have for us. Yes. As individuals and as a church. Yes. Father, go before us. Father, use us even today. Some are going out to eat. I pray that we will be a testimony to our waitress, waiter. And Father, we'll bless them with a good tip. Yes. God will give them a word of encouragement. And God, that you will use us where you have planted us. And Father, we pray this in your name. Amen. 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 Lord bless you.